How's it going guys? John here. This is The Basic Expert and this week we're starting a deep dive into Classic Traveler. This is the second time I've recorded this video. Uh, I recorded the entirety of the video before and realized that it was totally screwed up and the audio was jacked up because I had messed with my settings before I had left on vacation to visit family. So I had to listen to that and realize I wasted about a 40-50 minute video and that I got to redo it. So I'm just going to count that as a practice and we're just going to get into this. We're talking about Classic Traveler. Previous video series was on a basic fantasy role playing game and a lot of people suggested after that I should do something completely different and a lot of people suggested Classic Traveler. I love Classic Traveler. I'm running a military style West Marches game where the players are stationed on a destroyer and are often sent to planet side areas where there's insurgents or areas where the Imperium needs uh, grunts and tough guys to, to deal with situations that are going on on these planets, uprisings, insurgencies, uh, finding paraphernalia or engaging in, in that sort of QRF kind of stuff on the borders of Imperial space. So that's kind of been the campaign that I'm doing. And if you want to support my work and get a traveler adventure, please check out my subscribe star here. The fourth adventure here for uh, for this every month, people at $3 or more, supporters at $3 or more get an adventure. This one is a traveler adventure and you get these maps, this battle map here that I made. Uh, you get this and this adventure, which is a classic traveler compatible adventure that is a hostage rescue adventure and uh it should be i i ran this for my characters and then after running it for them i sort of tweaked it a bit or for my players i tweaked it a bit and made it better i hope so this is uh for download here and if you are if you support me you get access to every other previous thing that i've done so if that interests you please check it out uh but on to classic traveler so Let's talk about what makes Traveler unique. Traveler is a uh, 2d6 game system. Uh, you are generally just trying to roll 8 or better. That's usually what you're trying to do. And I really love this game. It is both simple but deep. There's layers of complexity that are involved in this. I love the attack matrices that are involved and how various weapons affect armor in different ways and some armors are really good at protecting against certain weapons and not very good at other weapons so it makes characters think about what they're putting on it's not just like well I'm wearing plate armor so I'm just invulnerable to everything it's 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 more about uh, I'm wearing this armor and it's really good against this sort of thing but not this I hope we don't run into enemies that are wielding laser rifles because my armor is rated for more traditional ballistics and not lasers as an example so I really like that aspect of it. Character creation is incredibly unique. Uh, you are not playing as a level 1 18 year old like you are in maybe D&D &D or how a lot of people play that. You are playing as a more grizzled veteran sort of adventure. You've already served terms of military service for the Imperium or uh, some other military faction and you've retired and you're now out in space doing your adventures trying to find your way after uh, your your career is over and so you've already seen some things you probably you've already gained some skills and that brings us to the fact that it's a skill based game it is not level based and I like that as well I'm, as you have watched my channel you know that as much as I love D&D &D and the OSR I'm very much a fan of skill based games my own game Cow Punchers which is a d6 game dice pool game is skill based so I'm quite the fan of skill based games and Traveler is that so we're going to go through the facsimile edition. I have my uh, physical copy right here. Let's see if it'll appear. It's all washed out. It's white and I have my window open. But uh, I really like this. I got it as a print on demand on, uh, on drive through RPG. Um, it's, it's a really good print. It's a scan. The PDF doesn't look as good as the actual physical book, actually. I don't know what's up with that. It's just the... The, the print version looks really clean and the PDF looks a little, definitely looks like a scan. 
regardless, it's it's the content that I care about. The presentation maybe leaves a little bit to be desired in this edition of Traveler, but man, it is such a important historical aspect of of the hobby to have this game and to be able to play it. And I really love it. It's a good game. It's probably the best sci-fi game that's ever been made. I don't know if anything will ever top it, in my opinion. Um, it, it is to sci-fi what D, sci-fi games, what D&D is to fantasy role-playing. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about character creation. Um, I have a notepad up here to make it a little smaller because we don't need that much space. We're going to make our character on this, on this notepad screen here. And uh, we're going to roll some dice and uh, see what happens. So uh, the facsimile edition comes with the little black books combined into one book. Uh, so book one deals with characters in combat. Book two is starships. Book three is worlds and adventures. Uh, we're only going to cover the beginning of book one here. This is, again, going to be a video series going through all three of these books. But uh, it should be a good time. So let's, let's dive into it and get going. So let's get into book one, characters. So, Traveler is again a 2d6 game. Uh, you're, you're rolling 2d6s. You're generally trying to roll an eight or better in these cases. There is some notation as far as uh, how things are, are um, die conventions that we should talk about. Uh, when you are rolling, when you are not rolling 2d6, it is explicitly stated that you are doing so. Sometimes uh, you roll, if it's an 8+, plus like this, this means that you're rolling an 8 or better on your, on your 2d6. If you have a 6-, minus, like this, you need to roll a 6 or less. And that's how it's, it's, uh, it's notated here. If it's a dice modifier, it's going to be on the opposite end. So... Target numbers are going to have the plus or minus on the right side of the number. Dice modifiers are going to have the plus or minus on the left side of the number. So in this case, a plus four would mean I'd roll my 2d6 and I'd add four. This minus two obviously means I'm going to roll 2d6 and subtract two from the roll. And that's pretty much it. Uh, everything is based off of that. and. Uh, Characteristics, let's talk about character creation because that's what this video was going to be all about. Uh, you have strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing. And you're going to want to remember them in this order because you have the Universal Personality Profile, or UPP, which is a hexadecimal-based uh, number. So you digits 0 through 9 are going to be represented in the Arabic numerals, whereas uh, 10 through 15 highest number you can get being 15 is going to be A through F, where 10 is A, uh, 11 is B, uh, 12 is C, so on and so forth, until you get to 15, which is F. And you're going to display your uh, numbers for your ability scores, as you, if you want to call them that, in this form of notation here. So this character has a strength of 7, a dexterity of 7, an endurance of 7, an intelligence of seven, an education of seven, and a social standing of seven. And so that's that's a way of showing this. Like here, uh, this fourth position, it says indicates an intelligence of 11. So if th this is an average character here. If they're all sevens. This is considered average. Uh, B, this B here indicates that this character has a, a very high uh, intelligence. And so, you know, it could be A, seven seven b seven seven that would be another way of notating a character that has a high strength that would be in this numerical position here uh if you have a social standing which is always this last number here that is rather high you can get a noble title it can be a knight a baron a count a duke so on and so forth this could be this could could lead to a fiefdom that you're you're at the discretion of the referee that your character has control over or maybe your character's family has control over so let's go over into character creation. Um, you're going to roll for these uh, six with two dice. Let's, let's, let's do that first. So let's bring up our, our sheet here. Uh, we are going to roll. Um, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to roll 2d6 here. Um, and we're going to see what kind of character we can create. So let's roll for strength first. 
strength is five. That's not too great. Let's roll for dexterity. That is six. Let's roll for endurance. Much better with a 10. Intelligence. That's dumb. Dumb as rocks. He's a three. Uh, education. That doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. He has an education of 10. He's a very educated idiot. I, you know, that makes sense. If you, I, This is one thing I like. Call of Cthulhu does this as well. Is separating intelligence from education. As we've seen in the world today, it is entirely possible to be highly educated, but still a moron. And it's possible to not be uh, educated academically, but a very intelligent individual. So um, I think that that's cool. And so I, I put a 10 in there, and actually I should make it an A. So, uh, and let's do social standing as the last one. So this one should be an A as well. I'm not even following my own guidelines. So, social standing. Six. So this is my character's uh, UPP. Let's universal personality profile. Uh, he has again a strength of five for now. Uh, dexterity of 6, endurance of 10, intelligence of 3, education of 10, and a social standing of 6. We're going to then pick a career field to go into uh, in this. And as you can see here, if we go down a bit, you have these options here. You have Navy, Marines, Army, Scouts. Scouts do not get commissioned or promotion. Uh, merchants or other. And other likewise does not get uh, commissions or promotions. You don't have um, a, you have a much lower role to get in uh, to the field of your choice here. So let's look at our character here and see what kind of career might be best for him. Um, I think army might be good because it requires a dexterity and endurance that uh, I have pretty good I'm pretty good in and an education that I'm also quite good in so I will be able to get the plus three bonus on this because I have a dexterity of six and I have an endurance of ten and I have an education of six and I'll get the bonus here for commission and here so army's probably the best place for this character to go so we're going to roll to see if i can get in i gotta roll a five or better i get the dm plus one for the dexterity of six or greater and i get the dm plus two for an endurance of five or greater again my uh dexterity is six and my endurance is ten six in the a here let's roll i rolled a 12 I'm definitely getting in. That's without even the modifier, so 14 altogether. Let's roll for survival. Uh, education plus 6, I get a plus 2. So my education is, again, uh, an A. So let's see if uh, I survive being in the army. The character's dead. <laughs> So let's roll. Let's roll up a new character. This is what happens when you uh, when you're playing Traveler. He did not survive. I rolled a three. So even with two, actually, hold up. Uh, I rolled a three. I just barely survived. Never mind. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That'd be annoying. But you can die in character creation. Uh, I rolled. A three, so with the DM plus two is is five, so I just barely survived. Um, don't know what kind of harrowing experience this character had, but it was a close one. Let's see if I can get commissioned. Uh, I have an endurance of ten, so I get the plus one modifier to see if I can get commissioned. I rolled an eleven plus one, so twelve. I get commissioned. Let's see if I get a promotion. So when you get commissioned, you take on rank one in the army, which is lieutenant. Let's see if I get promoted from lieutenant to captain. 
So I have an education of, again, uh, 10, so I get a plus one, and I gotta roll a six or better specified here. So let's see. Uh, I rolled a five plus one, so that's just barely uh, a promotion. So we're going to acquire our skills now. So if we go up to here, um, on basic skill eligibility. So I get two skills uh, for the initial term of service. I get one skill for being commissioned and I get one skill for getting a promotion. So I get four skills all together. Let's see. I get four skills and so I have all, I can use all of these tables here. I uh, I can use this one because my education is uh, a 10. You need an eight or more to use this one here. I also get um, to use these ones here as well. And I also sort of look here. So uh, I'm an army, so I get rifle one as a skill automatically. And uh, I made it to lieutenant, so I get SMG one. Skill level one. Uh, let's let's see what kind of things I get here. I think I'm going to roll on twice on personal development, and I'll do one on service skills and one on advanced education table here. I'm not going to do this one yet. Maybe if I do a second term, I will. But kind of want to see if I could get uh, some of my physical attributes like strength and dexterity a little higher, especially dexterity, that'd be nice. Uh, so let's roll a d6, see what I get. Two, which is dexterity plus one. So my dexterity is gonna go up to seven. Roll on that table again for the second skill. Two again, okay. Very dexterous. Uh, let's roll on service skills. Six which is gun combat, and I have to immediately pick a type of, of weapon to use. So um, we'll go with uh, body pistol, one. And so what I'm, what I'm getting that from is here, body pistol. And body pistols are uh, neat little weapons. They can be hidden on a person so I'm thinking like I already got rifles and SMGs It'd be nice to have a weapon that I can take into places where maybe weapons aren't necessarily allowed well, that's my thinking behind taking that so let's get one more we're gonna do the advanced education table here and uh, roll four get tactics one that's good so let's put that down there Tactics one. So let's see if I re enlist. So to re enlist, I have to roll seven or better, just a straight roll. Uh, let's see if I can get into the uh, back into the army. I rolled a five, which means I'm not getting in. So this character is probably going to muster out. Let's just let's just for the sake of the video call it done. Let's say I had gotten in, I'd be able to go back through, I'd do another survival roll, I I would do another promotion roll, I'd see what skills I got. On that second term, I would only let's say that I uh didn't get a promotion, I'd only get one skill that turn, so I'd only get to roll on one of these tables and I'd have to pick. Let's say I did get promoted, I would get to roll twice now and I'd have to pick. So we're gonna muster out though. Mustering out is, uh, let, let's look at our, our rules here for mustering out. So uh, I did one term, so I'm gonna get one roll on the mustering out tables here. Uh, and I am going out on rank two, on rank three or four, because I, I reached, um, no, on rank two, so I'm only gonna get one more. But I made it to army captain. Uh, which is rank one. 
or, or rank two. Sorry, I'm gonna put that in there. Uh, so that means that I only get to roll on the this table here and here. Uh, I can only roll. I could roll on this one twice, or on this one twice, or one and one. I think I'm gonna do one and one. So let's see. We'll roll on the benefits table first. Four, which is I get a gun. Let's say I uh, I leave with a, a rifle. Let they let me keep my military rifle, maybe. And let's roll on the cash table. One, not good. Uh, and I two thousand credits to my name kind of poor and that's my character characters done but as you can see character creation is really really interesting in how it um, is fast uh, it doesn't I, I don't have a problem with characters dying during character creation because it's so quick and easy to make a new character to roll up the statistics and just try again until you get a character that that survives and works I like the sort of randomness of seeing. I know it's very old school and a lot of modern players don't appreciate this, but going in and not really knowing what kind of character I'm going to make, um, that always just is cool to me. I like being surprised. It's kind of like real life uh, where you know you kind of are good at things naturally that um, other people are not good at and vice versa with other people and you. And you kind of, if you're smart, you kind of focus on those skills and kind of go into your field or career based on those skills and your natural abilities and, and learn new skills from there. And sometimes you don't know what kind of skills you're going to pick up along the way. It just feels more like real life to me, which I appreciate. So that is character creation it is as you can see super simple super easy this is going to be again for the next few weeks i don't know how long it's going to take we're going to go through uh all of these books um we just scratched the surface of book one of the little black books and uh going forward again we are going to go uh through all three of these books and talk about everything in depth like what i just did here if you appreciate what I'm doing here, please consider liking and subscribing the video or checking out my subscribe star uh, as well and, and get some dungeon maps, goodies, adventures, um, the traveler adventure for June which is this month. And um, I will be streaming tonight, Monday. I'll be talking to a game designer about his D12 based role playing game that he's going to be releasing soon. I'm going to be doing some poster art for it soon and potentially some uh, more illustrative work within it going forward in the future depending on how things shake out for them but uh, I wanted to give them a platform the creator is a cool guy and um, it, it, it should be an interesting conversation tonight so please tune in for the live stream at 815 Mountain Standard Time and again check out my links check out Cow Puncher is my game the physical book should be available on drive RPG soon I'm just waiting as of recording this video on my proof copy to come in so hopefully it comes in hopefully it looks good and and people can start buying physical copies of cow punchers on drive through rpg i am working on my aztec game as well as an adventure or scenario book with some optional rules for cow punchers as well so keep an eye out for that so until the next video guys i'll talk to you later peace out